everyone, it's Veronica from Blue Star Crochet. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited to have you here today because we are going to be learning how to crochet this amazing granny stitch sweater right here in this video tutorial. It's a really easy beginner friendly sweater pattern that is easy to crochet, easy to put together and so easy to wear. So we're going to be crocheting four separate panels and we're going to put all these panels all together to create our sweater. So we're going to crochet the back panel, the front panel and then two sleeves. I'm going to show you how to put it all together and add a few finishing touches to the neckline so our sweater is ready to wear. So I'm going to guide you through crocheting this sweater step by step in this video tutorial. You can also access the free pattern, the written pattern pattern to this sweater on my blog bluestarcrochet.com as well as a ad free pdf pattern available in my shop over on etsy and ravelry that you can purchase for a small fee so let's not waste any more time and let's get into crocheting this beautiful granny stitch sweater so let's start with a few materials that we will need to complete the project firstly i'm going to be working with Tweed Delight yarn from Hobby. This is 85% wool and 10% acrylic. As you can see, it's a rowing type yarn. So if you don't get on with wool, I suggest uh, swapping for just plain acrylic or cotton yarn. As long as you meet the gauge of the pattern, um, any yarn is gonna be um, suitable. This is a um, chunky weight. Uh, this is, 109 yards or 100 meters per 50 grams of yarn so do uh, find as close um, alternative as possible to this yarn i will include some alternatives in the written pattern um, pdf or on in the free version on the blog bluestarcrochet.com so do have a look for different yarn alternatives um, as well as yarn we're going to be needing two different sizes of crochet hooks so i'm going to be using a five millimeter and a six millimeter crochet hook the five millimeter is going to be used for the bottom hem and the sleeve cuffs and the six millimeter crochet hook is going to be used for the granny stitches for the main body now um, once you meet the gauge of the pattern so the main granny stitch gauge um you will determine the hook size so you might have to use a five millimeter or seven millimeter six and a half whatever you need to use and for the hem for the bottom hem you just drop one size down okay so it's nice and stretchy and kind of pulls the sweater in a little bit as well as yarn and hooks we will also need some scissors to cut the ends and some um, a yarn needle to sort the ends out at the very end and of course the mentioned gauge so this is a gauge ruler or gauge measure it's a square one and it's uh, made from solid wood which is great because it doesn't move when you need to check the gauge of your project and last but not least i've got a tape measure just a straight tape measure to use um just to check on your progress or to take your body measurements before you start and when you choose in the size of the pattern that you want to make so let's not stretch this out any longer and let's dive into the tutorial to start working on the back panel, we're going to start working bottom up. So we're going to be starting with bottom hem um, of the back panel. So let's go ahead and create a slip knot. So I've got loop of yarn and I'm going to place the loop onto my fingers. Then we're going to cross the yarn and I'm going to grab the tail end and pull up a loop through. And I'm going to be using the smaller of the two hooks. So this is my five millimeter hook. And I'm going to place this loop onto my hook and tighten it down. Now, to start the bottom hem, we're going to chain 11. Okay, so I've got 11 chains that I've just made. And now I'm going to start working into the second chain from the hook. So the first chain on the hook doesn't count. And I'm gonna work one single crochet into each chain of the foundation chain across. So I'm gonna insert my hook, 
yarn over and pull up a loop which leaves me two loops on a hook yarn over and pull through two so this is your first single crochet finished and i'm going to go ahead and work one single crochet into each chain of the foundation chain so by the end of the first row we should have 10 single crochet stitches all together and I know we chained 11 but as you remember we started working into second chain from the hook and the first chain does not count as a stitch. So that's why you chain 11 but by the end of row 1 you will have 10 single crochets. So let's just have a look. I have finished my first row and I've got 10 single crochet stitches. Now to work the second row we're going to turn our work and for the bottom hem what I like to do is work a solid single crochet on the, on the first and the very last stitch. I prefer to do this because it just strengthens the edge of your bottom hem and it gives you kind of nicer loops to work across the edge of the hem when you then work up the main body. So the row two is going to be the repeat for the um, going forward for the rows of the bottom hem. So I'm going to chain one. Now this chain one does not count as the stitch throughout the pattern. And I'm going to insert my hook under both loops of the first single crochet, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two. Now for the next eight single crochet stitches, I'm going to be working through the back loop only, which is what creates that ribbed hem look. So as you can see, if I bring you a bit closer, I've got the V stitch at the top, so this is my front loop, the one closer to me is front loop and the one further away from me is the back loop. So it's the back loop that we're going to be working through for the next eight single crochets. So let's go ahead and insert my hook through the back loop only, yarn over, pull through, then yarn over, pull through two, okay? Let's do that again. So I've got the front loop closer to me and the back loop away from me. So let's insert the hook under the back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And this is the same stitch that we're going to be repeating for eight single crochets. Because as I mentioned at the beginning, I like to do the edge stitches as a standard single crochet because it just strengthens that edge of your hem. So here we go. I've got nine single crochets already done with the first one being standard single crochet, then eight single crochets through back loop only. And for the very last single crochet, I'm going to insert my hook under both loops of the last stitch there, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two. And row two is basically your repeat that we're going to work up the bottom hem. So we're going to be working in short rows of the bottom hem. And I will meet you back when we work up enough rows for your particular size and the number of rows you need to work up. You can find that number out on the blog bluestarcrochet.com or if you have purchased the PDF, refer to the written pattern to see how many times you need to repeat row two. And here we are at the end of the bottom hem. So I have repeated row two as many times as I needed to to create a hem big enough for the size I am making. What we're going to do now is get rid of our five millimeter hook or the smaller hook out of the two and I'm going to grab my six millimeter crochet hook and place the loop onto my hook. What we're going to do next, so as you can imagine the sweater, this is your bottom hem which um, is worked in short rows in this direction. What we're going to do now is start working up the length of the back panel and we're going to be working in this direction which means that for the first row we're going to be working across the edge stitches or the end stitches of each row of the bottom hem. 
okay? So let's go ahead and start the first row. I'll show you the first two rows because then they become um, a repeat of these two rows that you just work up the back panel. So here we go. I have worked the last um, row of the hem and what we're gonna do now is work across the edge of the hem. So I've you've got a hole. I like to work into this hole. And then the next row, when you look on the edge, it's got these two loops that look like a V stitch. Okay, that's the edge stitches I like to work through because it creates a nice and neat edge. So let's go ahead and, like I said, grab the bigger hook, whatever hook you need to use to meet the gauge of the pattern. So let's go ahead and start the first row of main body. I'm going to start with a standing double crochet. This is an alternative to the three chain or the beginning three chain. Um, to minimize the gap at the edge of your work as well. So I'm going to extend the loop I've got on my hook, place my finger on top of that loop. Now you have to hold this loop for the duration of the stitch, otherwise it'll all fall apart, okay? So I'm going to hold the loop on my hook, which has been already extended, twist it towards me, which creates another loop. Then I'm going to insert my hook into that first edge stitch yarn over and pull through and now i'm gonna go ahead yarn over pull through two while i'm still holding that loop and then yarn over and pull through two so this creates the standing double crochet which as you can see is a pretty good replica of the standard double crochet um, to minimize the gap at the edge of your work so i have worked into the first edge stitch i'm gonna miss the next stitch or miss the next edge stitch and I'm going to chain one to create one chain space at the edge which we're going to be working into later on for row two. So I worked the first standing double crochet into the end stitch of first row, chain one, I'm going to miss the next um, miss the next row, so miss the next hole and I'm going to work into the next V stitch or next under those next two loops there. So I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna place three double crochets into that stitch, into that end stitch. One, two, and three. So this is your first granny cluster stitch, okay? So we've done the standing double crochet, chain one, miss one, and then three double crochets into the next end stitch. Now I'm going to chain one, miss the next hole and the next V stitch and work into the next hole and I'm going to again place three double crochets into that end stitch, chain one and again miss the next V stitch, miss the next hole and I'm going to work under the two loops of that end V stitch there. And I'm going to again place three double crochets, which are the granny cluster stitch, like this, chain one. And by this point, you kind of um, get the hang of it of what we're doing here. So we are creating the granny cluster stitches with one chain spaces in between and skipping two edge stitches or two ends of rows of the bottom hem. So um, as I explained at the beginning, um, you're gonna be looking at the loops or the, the, the V stitch on the end or the hole um, at the end there and continue working all the way across the bottom hem and I will meet you back um, at this edge when we have two rows left and all we're going to simply do is mirror the beginning of the row by skipping one row chain one and then work one double crochet on this edge but I'm going to go ahead and work up um, row one and I'll meet you back at the end. Here we are at the end of row one where I've got two end rows left 
And what we're going to do, as I said, is mirror the beginning. So I'm going to chain one. I'm going to skip the next end uh, stitch and I'm going to simply place one double crochet into the very last edge stitch. So that's the end of row one. And as you can see, it's nicely kind of flaring out and that's exactly what you want it to look like because we used smaller hook for the bottom hem. So the bottom hem is going to be really stretchy and it's really going to pull the sweater in um, at the bottom. So at the end of row one, we're going to turn our work and we're going to start on row two. Now row two starts slightly differently because we're going to create um, an extra cluster on either end um, of this row. So to start row two, again, I prefer to start with a standing double crochet. So I'm going to extend my loop, twist it around, insert my hook into the first double crochet, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's my first standing double crochet. And then I'm going to turn my attention to this chain one space and I'm going to work two double crochets into that one chain space to create my first granny stitch cluster like this. So that's my first cluster. Then again, we're going to chain one to create a space. I'm going to miss the next granny cluster and turn my attention to the next one chain space. And I'm going to work three double crochets into the next one chain space. Like this. So this is where we are. And again, chain one, miss the next cluster stitch and work granny cluster into the next one chain space. And as you can see, this is the repeat for the rest of the row. And it becomes really easy. It work, works up really fast as well. You would be surprised how fast you can make um, this sweater in a granny cluster stitch. So here we go. That's what we're doing for row two, is just placing one granny cluster between each of these clusters. And then when we get to the end of row two, we're gonna work into that one chain space and then into the top of the standing double crochet. But I'm gonna go ahead and work through row two and I will meet you back at the end here. Here we are at the end of row two of the main body and I worked my last granny cluster here in the one chain space. Now I'm gonna skip the next one and turn my attention to the last one chain space. And we're going to work two double crochet into that one chain space, the very last one. And then to place the last double crochet, I'm going to work it into the top of the standing double crochet. If you use three chain instead, you're going to be working into the top of the beginning three chain. So here we go. That's the end of row two with the granny clusters either end. To start row three, we're again going to turn our work. And to start row three, we're going to again start with standing double crochet or chain three if you prefer, whatever your choice is. I'm going to go with standing double crochet, chain one. Then I'm going to miss the first cluster at the bottom of my first stitch and work into the first one chain space. And again, we're going to place three double crochets into that one chain space. And again, chain one, miss the next cluster and work three double crochet into the next one chain space. And again, chain one, miss the cluster and work three double crochet into the next one chain space. And again, this is the repeat for the rest of the row. So for the rest of row three, we're going to work all the way across and I will meet you back at the end of that row. Here I am at the end of row three with one chain space left. So I'm going to go ahead and work the one um, granny cluster in that one chain space and then to finish off row three I'm going to chain one 
and I'm gonna miss the next two double crochets and work the very last double crochet into the top of my standing double crochet or into the top of the beginning three chain if that's what you're using okay so that's the end of row three and now to work up the length of your um, back panel all you need to do is repeat row two and row three for the pattern as many times as you wish or if you're following the written pattern if you're not adjusting the length um, look up the number of rows you will need for the back panel but all you're going to be doing is alternating row two and row three to work up the length so as you can see my back panel is now finished so this is the bottom hem and as you can see i have repeated row two and row three um, for as many times as I needed to to reach the desired length of my back panel for the front panel the um, Process is the same. So for the front panel, we're going to start with the bottom hem that has got exactly the same amount of rows as the back panel and then we're going to work up as many rows um, as we need to for the front panel until the last four rows so the front panel we're gonna then stop four rows before you reach the length of your back panel and we're gonna split the last row into two shoulder um, panels and then we'll leave the four rows in the middle out for the neckline so this sweater is going to have the crew neckline that we're going to finish up later on but for the front panel you stop if you're adjusting the length you stop four rows before the length of your back panel and then for the last four rows we're going to work um, just on the shoulder panels and we'll leave the middle out to create a crew neckline. So let's go ahead and do that together. So to mark out the last row of your front panel, when you um, reach the amount of rows, uh, minus four rows, because we're gonna work the last four rows split. So how are we gonna split the last row? You will need to refer to the written pattern, either on the blog or the um, PDF. But I have got 22 clusters for my last row. So I've got 22 clusters. So what I'm going to do is leave eight clusters in the middle for the neckline and then have seven clusters for one shoulder and seven clusters for the other shoulder. So what you simply need to do, referring to the written pattern for the, for the stitch counts, is I'm gonna count seven clusters, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm gonna place my stitch marker into the next one chain space. Then I'm gonna miss eight clusters, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and place my stitch marker into the next one chain space, which then leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven clusters on the other shoulder. So I've got seven clusters either side for the shoulders and eight clusters in the middle for the neckline. So after you have marked the last row um, on your front panel with your yarn still attached, we're gonna now work up the um, one side the shoulder on one side so we have finished the last row with the um, cluster so we're going to start with standing double crochet so I'm going to go ahead and work standing double crochet I have to join new yarn here and again we're going to chain one miss the next cluster and work three double crochet into the next one chain space again chain one work cluster into the next one chain space and we're going to continue this until we get to the one chain space where we've got the stitch marker in because that's where we need to stop and <clears throat> we're going to turn our work because we're just going to work up the last four rows of the front panel 
to create the neckline in the middle. And that now brings me onto the one chain space where we've got the stitch marker. So what we're gonna do is mirror the beginning of this row, but we're gonna um, mirror it into this one chain space. So I'm gonna just take that stitch marker out and I have chained one. So for the next one chain space, I'm only gonna work the one double crochet to mirror the end of that row. So into the one chain space, which you marked out first, I'm only going to work the one um, double crochet. Now we're going to turn our work and leaving the rest of the row as it is. We're going to just ignore the rest of the row for now. So to start row two of your shoulder panel, I'm again going to extend my loop and work one standing double crochet. like this and then that one chain space we created I'm gonna work two double crochets into that space to create my first cluster chain one and then again work one cluster into the next one chain space until we get to the very last stitch. And then again, we're gonna mirror the end of that row and work the cluster stitch here at the end. Here we are at the end of second row of that shoulder panel and I've got the one chain space left. One chain space left with a standing double crochet. So I'm gonna work two double crochet into that last one chain space. And the very last double crochet is going to be worked into the top of the standing double crochet right there to finish off. Okay, so that's the first two rows of the um, one side of the shoulder panel. Now what we're going to do is then repeat row one again. So we're going to start with standing double crochet, chain one, work the clusters all the way across and then finish off the row as standard by one, one chain and one double crochet into the last stitch. So the shoulder panel, each shoulder panel is gonna have four rows. So all we're gonna do is repeat these two rows once again to work up a little bit of height. And here we are at the end of those four rows that we worked up for one shoulder side of your front panel. So as you can see, we only worked across a very short row to work up four rows for the shoulder panel on here. So after you work up four rows, we're gonna just fasten off so we can cut yarn. And that's the one side of your um, front panel finished. Now, what we need to do is now continue and work up the other side of the uh, front panel. So as you can see, you finished your last row, the row four. So we need to flip or we need to turn our work like this because we started working from this direction towards the neckline. Now we've got those eight clusters in the middle that we're gonna just leave unworked, which is what's gonna create our neckline. And now we're gonna turn our attention into the other chain space where we placed our stitch marker. And this is where we're gonna join our yarn. So I'm gonna uh, take that stitch marker out so it's not in my way. I'm gonna join yarn into that chain space that we have marked out with our stitch marker whatever method you use to join your yarn so this is where we're going to join our yarn now and all we need to do is mirror exactly this side of the shoulder panel again so we started the first row with um, standing double crochet chain one and we ended that row with chain one and double crochet as well so this is exactly the same thing we're going to do on this side so i'm going to go ahead and work up standing double crochet so i'm going to extend my loop and work through that one chain space like this. So that's my first standing double crochet, chain one, miss the next cluster and work 
three double crochet into the next one chain space chain one and into the next one chain space and repeat for the rest of the row and again for the end of row one of the second shoulder panel I work the last cluster stitch so I'm going to chain one and work one double crochet into the top of the first standing double crochet like this to mirror the beginning of the row and as you can see all we need to do is now repeat exactly the same thing what we did for this side of your shoulders um, work up four rows on this side to match the uh, first shoulder side and that will create um, your neckline so it looks a, a little bit square at the moment but once we add the um, neckline hem it will look nice and neat and it'll be a nice crew neck sweater so i'm going to go ahead and work up three more rows on this side to match the first shoulder side so this is what your front panel should look like um, after completing the four rows on either side for your shoulders. So this is the neckline in the middle. As you can see, we skipped or we missed these eight clusters in the middle to create the neckline. So now all we've got to do is line up the front panel with the back panel and attach it together across the shoulder seams and then work up two sleeves that we're going to attach to the sides and um, seam the sides down and then the sweater will be finished. So um, let's go ahead and work up two sleeves and then put all four separate panels together to create your sweater. Once we do that we can then work on a neckline just finishing it off ever so slightly and your sweater will be done. Okay, now we're going to move on to working on our sleeve. So I have started a sleeve um, the same way as working on the main body panels. So we're going to start first with working on the sleeve curve. This is exactly the same as the bottom hem of your back or front panel. So it's worked across 10 stitches and we're going to be working up rows of single crochet through back loop only. I wanted to guide you through working up the first couple of rows or at least the first row of the sleeve because we're going to do it slightly differently for that balloon look where um, the sleeve is really pulled in at the cuff. Um, we're going to do the first row slightly differently by skipping one um, end stitch instead of the two like we did for the main body. This will kind of give us um, more of a balloon look to the sleeve. So I have finished the sleeve cuff, so this is going to be the cuff. And now I'm switching to the larger of the two hooks. And again, we're going to start working across the end stitches of each row like we did for the main body. But as I said previously, we're not going to skip two end stitches. We're only going to skip one. That will give us more of a pulled in look at the bottom um, for that balloon sleeve. So again, I'm going to start the first row by standing double crochets. So that's your first standing double crochet. Then we're going to chain one again and I'm going to miss the next end stitch and I'm going to work into the next one. So we're going to skip the hole and we're going to work into those two, under those two loops or that V looking stitch at the edge of your work. And we're going to place the first granny cluster stitch into that end stitch. So we're going to work three double crochet into that end stitch then chain one and now we're gonna skip the next end stitch which is the hole and we're gonna again work under the two loops of the next end stitch so instead of alternating like we did for the main body we alternated working through the hole or under those two loops if you only skip in one 
in between the cluster stitches, you're always going to be working into the same type of the end stitch. So that's a good way to check on yourself whether you're doing it right is to work under those two loops um, on the edge or if your first stitch falls into the hole stitch then you're always going to be working into every hole going forward okay and that's going to create our sleeve so once we finish the row um it's going to be um quite roughly so it's going to ruffle up quite a bit because we are only skipping one and one end stitch between the clusters and we're placing quite a few clusters across the cuff because we need the sleeve to kind of balloon out after we do the sleeve cuff so i'm going to go ahead and work the rest of the cluster stitches and i will meet you back at the end of the row i have come to the end of the first row and as i said previously you might think that this looks really odd because it really ruffles and it seems like there is too many stitches for the amount we need but trust the process this is what it exactly is supposed to look like um it ruffles up because you are basically placing all the stitches for the sleeve that you will need all the way up your arm onto that sleeve cuff there so just to convince you even further this is what the finished sleeve looks like and this is what we're trying to achieve so that's your sleeve cuff where it's pulled in and then we placed all the stitches we will need for the sleeve um, onto the sleeve cuff and because I wanted to keep this pattern really basic and really beginner friendly as you can see the sleeve is a straight sleeve is not tapered in any way so there are no increases or decreases to work on the sleeve so if I showed it you like this as you can see it does kind of balloon out when you're working on it but once you finish the whole sleeve you can see that um, there is method in the madness and um, you've got the, the cuff that pulls the sleeve in nicely at the wrist and then it kind of um, works up um, towards the the armhole so all the stitches that we will need for the width of the armhole we are actually placing onto the sleeve cuff that's why it might seem that there are just too many stitches but there are not so now um we have the sleeve finished i'm gonna go ahead and um we're gonna put all the panels together and construct our sweater together now we're gonna go ahead and put our sweater together so this is my back panel and as you can see i'm going by last row and I've got the right side of the last row facing me which is going to be um, inside at first while we work the panels together and then we're going to flip it right side out um, to kind of hide the seam a little bit but um, obviously the granny cluster stitch because we were turning after each row it creates pretty reversible fabric so um, you could just go ahead and place the right side of the last row in then I've got my front panel here is my front panel and again the right side of the last rows on the shoulder seams I'm going to place them on top of the back panel so I've got the right sides of the last two rows facing each other on the inside. Now what we need to do is attach the two panels across the shoulder seam so we're going to be working this part together on one side of the shoulder then we're going to miss this part in the middle because that is our neckline opening and we're going to then attach the other shoulder um, seam on the other side so let's go ahead and do that together for this I'm going to be using just a um, standard um, grey yarn for my seams firstly because the the rowing yarn um, is a little bit sticky so if you wanted to um, use a needle and sew the panels together i suggest using a standard yarn i'm going to be crocheting the panels together because we've got a nice um, stitches across the top but i'm going to be using standard yarn the reason being that um, this is obviously much stronger so i want the seam at the shoulder to be strong so i'm not going to be using this wool rowing yarn i'm going to be using a standard yarn to reinforce the seam across my shoulders because the weight of the whole jumper basically sits on your shoulder seam so your shoulder seams are really important to be strong 
That is why I'm going to use a standard yarn. And secondly, I think I'm running quite low. <laughs> so I'm not going to waste my um, yarn for seams or for something that's not going to be really visible. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and use a standard yarn. So firstly, I'm going to insert my hook through the first stitch on that shoulder seam there and through the first stitch of the back panel and I'm going to grab my yarn and attach it through both stitches like this um, whatever method you use and I like to use single crochet so I'm just going to go ahead and insert through both panels through both stitches on both panels um, and attach it basically stitch to stitch okay so I've got the three stitches of the granny cluster there so I've made three single crochets then we come to the one chain space for both of those panels so insert the hook through both one chain spaces on both panels okay and then again through the three double crochets of the next cluster on the front and on the back panel and we're just going to go ahead and single crochet the stitches together and then again through the one chain space and this is what your shoulder seam is going to look like so I'm going to go ahead and finish the first seam and this is the beauty of the panels that you've got nine stitches to work through there is no second guessing so we're going to just go ahead and single crochet um, the panels together stitch by stitch, chain space by chain space. And I'm going to just show you that obviously this is the wrong side of your seam. Then when you turn it inside out, it's going to hide the tops of the stitches. And yes, I could probably use slightly um, lighter colored yarn. But really, this is to reinforce the seam, um, just to make it a bit more stronger, because this seam is going to sit on your shoulders and the weight of the jumper is going to pull on the seam. So the shoulder seam is your most important seam um, of the whole jumper. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish off across this shoulder seam. Then again, join yarn on the other side and go across the shoulder seam on this side and then I will meet you back when we're gonna attach the sleeve to one side. Here are my shoulder seams all finished so we're still working on the wrong side. What we're gonna do next is bring the sleeve in. So we need to line up the sleeve so it fits properly and what I'm gonna do is open up the shoulder seams like this. So as you can see that's my neckline and this is one of the shoulder seams so we're going to bring the sleeve into it now okay so here is my sleeve panel and what we need to do is for the sleeve to properly line up for your sweater we need to find the middle point of the top of your sleeve and line up the middle point with your shoulder seam there and then you will know that it's kind of um straight in the middle so here we go find the middle of your sleeve so we've got the uh, granny clusters as the last um, row so I'm going to find the middle one which is um, six eight the eighth one I believe yeah here we go so I've got two four six seven on this side two four six seven on that side so this granny cluster is my middle one in the middle and the middle of the cluster is obviously the middle stitch so i'm just going to pop my stitch marker through the middle um, of that stitch and basically this is the stitch that we need to line up with your shoulder seam over here so i'm going to go ahead and if i show it you this way so we're going to line up the shoulder seam with that middle stitch here and attach it together so you can either use the stitch marker or what I like to do is because I've got these um, these two tail ends I'm going to make use of them so I'm going to insert my hook through that stitch through that shoulder seam this might take a little bit of wiggling to kind of get through the shoulder seam but give that your best go 
to get your hook you might actually want to drop to a smaller hook but let's see if I can do it okay so I've inserted my hook through the shoulder seam and now I'm going to grab that middle stitch which I just lost because I removed my stitch marker so let's go ahead and find it again it's this one here and I'm going to um, insert my hook through that middle stitch and I'm going to use these tail ends so I'm just going to pull one tail end through like this and then I'm simply just going to tie a knot a double knot to attach the sleeve where it needs to be so now you can see that the sleeve is attached the middle of the sleeve is attached to your shoulder seam so that's middle to middle okay and now what we need to do is attach the sleeve um, equally to the front and to the back panel okay so don't stretch the sleeve you need to count how many rows we're gonna go down so let's line it up and see where it goes so I'm gonna go down to this row and just use stitch markers to attach this like that and as you can see I attached it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 rows down from the shoulder seam so we're gonna do exactly the same on the back panel so let me just grab another stitch marker and we're going to count 12 rows 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so 2 4 6 8 10 12 so we're down here and i'm going to attach it through the last stitch there okay and this is now you've got the middle attached and you've got every single um both of the sides of the sleeves marked out and attached where it's going to go so what we're now going to do is uh, because we're attaching tops of stitches to the sides of edge stitches we're going to go ahead and use the mattress stitch to attach the sleeve to the main body and the mattress stitch is then going to be the same technique that we're going to use to sew up the sleeve and to sew up the sides of the sweater here we go so i've got a needle i've got a sharp needle with the other yarn that i'm using if you are using wool rowing yarn for sewing i would definitely suggest plain yarn because uh, the wool rowing is quite grippy so if you try to sew uh, with the wool rowing type yarn it's it's not going to go well, trust me. So um, let's go ahead and start at the bottom of the sleeve. So as you can see, I attached it with a stitch marker. So I'm now going to remove it from the sleeve and I'm just going to go ahead and go through with my needle. And then I'm going to go through the uh, front panel like this and pull it through. And what I'm going to do now let me show you i'm gonna grab the end and my working yarn and i'm just gonna tie a knot because when i'm sewing things i always think that these things are just gonna come apart and let me down after i finished okay so just knot it down make sure it's securely attached and now for the mattress stitch we're gonna go through one side and out and then through the front panel kind of in a zigzag style through the next stitch of the sleeve and through the front panel and we're just gonna kind of weave it in and out like this i hope you can see this let me just move my hand we're kind of doing a zigzag um, so through one panel and through the sleeve panel like this and just keep going left and right creating a zigzag like this 
and I'll bring you a little bit closer just to show you what it looks like okay so I have been doing these zigzags kind of on both panels and the beauty of the mattress stitch is that we're just now we're now gonna just pull on the string and it's all gonna disappear and this is why you cannot use the wool rowing yarn because it would um, grip too much so as you can see that yarn completely disappeared um, into your work so honestly you could use yellow whatever yarn uh, for the mattress stitch because it completely um, disappears into your seam okay so let me just take you a little bit closer to this mattress stitch so there are no uh, wanderings okay so my yarn is coming out of that side so what I'm gonna do is go over to the other side just kind of go Do you know what mattress stitch reminds me of shoelaces so it's like to that side now we're going to go back over to the other side like this and then back over to this side the only reason i had it let flat is because i needed to kind of line up um so i don't run out of either sleeve or the front panel but let's just show you so it's kind of from the bottom out like this and then from bottom out on the other side and you kind of create this shoelace zigzag shoelace the other thing for mattress stitch if you get to if you come to pull it closed do it gently and do not over pull don't tighten it up too much you obviously want it to disappear into your work but if you really pull on it tight it will bunch up your fabric and once that happens you will be crying because I was crying <laughs> when I first did it because the only way out of it is to pick the seam okay and obviously with this it's a little bit it would be annoying to have to pick the seam so when you pull on it take your time do it gently kind of you know tug on it a little bit at a time don't go like yank it because then if your seam bunches up like this because you over tightened your mattress stitch um you will have to pick the seam there is no other way about it you will have to pick the seam so that's the technique that's the mattress stitch that i'm gonna use so all i'm gonna do is go ahead and work all the way across the sleeve the sleeve seam with the mattress stitch okay once you do that we are then gonna so let's just pretend that I've gone all the way through and it's attached still on the wrong side okay we're then gonna fold our sweater this way okay so let's just assume that sleeve is already attached so this will be attached. What we then need to do is go from the cuff, from the cuff of your sleeve, start at the cuff and then mattress stitch the sleeve together. So all the way for the underarm of your sleeve. Once you get to the, once you get to this point, so this is your armpit, then we're going to go ahead and mattress stitch all the way down to the bottom hem of your sweater okay so to attach the four panels we've got together to create the sweater we're going to start with the attaching the sleeve to your main body and then from the cuff to the armpit from the armpit all the way down to your bottom hem and once you do that you're going to have a sweater that you can try on and all that is left to do after is just finish off the neckline which is what we're going to do next 
And last but certainly not least part of the process is finishing off the neckline. I have sewn the sweater all together, all four panels and my sleeves are all finished. And just to show you the magic mattress stitch, as you can see, that's where the seam runs, but it's um really, really nice and neat. To finish off the neckline, we're first going to do one round of single crochet because we need to work down this edge, which means we're going to be working around the body of the edge, uh, double crochet stitches of the four rows on one side. And then the um, other side, we've got four rows there as well. So we're going to be placing three single crochets around each end double crochet of these four rows and then working across the front stitches we're just going to be placing one single crochet into each double crochet and the chain one space and of course same across the back so I've got the jumper or the sweater right side out so this is how it's going to be worn on this side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to join yarn around the edge stitch right after the shoulder seam so we're going to be working down these four rows uh, down the edge so let me go ahead and join yarn and i'm going to guide you through working around these end double crochets and then you should be okay to go ahead and work the other side so let's go ahead and uh, i've joined my yarn around the end double crochet of that row and I'm going to just go ahead and work one single crochet, second one and one more around that first edge double crochet like this and then we're going to simply move on to the next end double crochet of the of the next row and work three single crochet and again the next one the cluster we're just going to be working around the end double crochet there and again the last row is just a standalone double crochet so we've got three single crochets going around there so this is what it looks like at the moment so after you work across the end double crochets of those four rows, you'll have 12 single crochets. Then that brings us onto the front panel. And here is my first cluster. So I'm just gonna go ahead and work through the top of the stitches, the top two loops. So one single crochet into each double crochet. And then we come across the one chain space, so just one single crochet into the one chain space. And this is basically what we're going to do all the way around the neckline opening by placing one single crochet into each double crochet and into each one chain space across the front. And then, of course, once you go across the front, you'll again come across the four double crochets on the edge of those rows. So again, we're going to place three single crochet around each end double crochet, which means we'll pick up another 12 single crochets there and then simply go across the back, same as we're working across the front. And I'll meet you back when we reach the beginning or the first stitch. I have worked all the way around the neckline opening. And as you can see, I have simply slip stitched into the first single crochet to um, close the round. What we're going to do now is work in short rows of single crochet through back loop only. So it's going to match the cuffs and the bottom hem that we did. The, um, there are a couple of differences that I'm going to make for the neckline just to make it a little bit more comfortable. So we were working across 10 stitches for the cuffs and for the hem, but for the neckline, I'm only going to work half. So my neckline is only going to be like um, 
half the size um, of the cuffs and the hem because I don't like things close to my neck but by all means if you wanted to do 10 stitches just to make the collar uh, of the crew neck a little bit taller by all means um, use the 10 stitches like we did for the cuffs and for the hem and the other thing I'm not going to change is the size of the hook so for the single crochet we used the six millimeter crochet hook to go around the neck opening and again because I don't like things really tight and close to my neck I'm going to work with the um, six millimeter crochet crochet hook so I'm not going to change the hook size for the neckline because I don't want it to pull in too much if you do like things close to your neck and um, a bit tighter around your neck then you can drop down to the five millimeter crochet hook and work on 10 um, across 10 single crochet stitches like we did for the cuffs so this is where you can completely customize your neckline it's totally up to you so as I said I'm not changing my hook size but if you wanted to close the neckline perhaps the neck opening is a little bit too wide for your liking you can drop a hook size down to one size smaller than you're using for your main body and you can also work across 10 single crochet stitches instead of the five like I'm gonna be doing here. So um, to work across five stitches, five single crochets for the neckline, I'm gonna chain six. If you wanted to work across the 10 single crochet stitches, you're gonna need to chain 11, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and chain six, four, five, six. And I'm going to now work down the foundation chain I just made. So into the second hook, uh, second chain from the hook, I'm going to place one single crochet and another single crochet. Third one, fourth and fifth. So I've got five single crochet here that I've just made across the foundation chain and I'm going to simply slip stitch back into the first single crochet so slip stitch then slip stitch into the next single crochet okay I'm going to chain one and now I'm going to turn that foundation chain I just worked across so you don't have to keep turning the whole sweater you can just kind of um, flip the foundation chain over and now what I'm gonna do is work four single crochets through back loop only and the last single crochet is gonna be a solid single crochet just to give the edge a little bit more stability and make it a little bit more neater so I've chained one before I turn so now I'm gonna go into the first single crochet but I'm gonna be working through the back loop only because it's the one closer to the sweater so that's back loop only and the second one third and the fourth so into each one across until I get to the very last one and I'm gonna work a solid single crochet under both loops for the last single crochet okay so we worked away from the main sweater body now I'm gonna chain one and again, I'm going to turn just that foundation chain. And now again, I'm going to work a solid single crochet under both loops for the first stitch. And then follow by four single crochets through the back loop only. Two, three, and four like this and now we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch into the next single crochet so as you can see it's coming out of this single crochet but we just work so I'm gonna move on to the next one so I'm gonna slip stitch into the next single crochet then slip stitch into the next one chain one and again flip this collar part over and basically repeat so four single crochets through back loop only or into each chain into each stitch until you get to your last one however many stitches you're using for your collar and then for the last single crochet it's a solid stitch solid single crochet 
then again chain one and I'm going to turn over and again I'm going to start with solid single crochet and then four single crochet through back loop only three and four and then simply slip stitch into the next single crochet and slip stitch into the next one again so that's what we're basically going to repeat all the way around your neckline so that's going to then become your neckline and we're going to continue all the way around the neckline opening and when you get back um to the end of the um neckline we're going to simply attach the underside of the foundation chain with the last um, row of the um, neckline and you can either sing or you can either crochet together or sew it together whatever you prefer for neat effect I'm going to use the mattress stitch to just attach the first row with the last row of the neckline just to make it a full um, full circle so um, I'll meet you back when that's done and as you can see here is the whole neckline finished so I have worked all the way around and used up all the single crochet stitches and when I got to the end I simply attached the two rows together so the last row with the underside of the foundation chain and that actually completes our sweater project so everything is now done and our project is ready to wear Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to see your granny stitch sweater versions. Don't forget to share them with me on social media. If you have enjoyed this video tutorial, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn the notifications on so you get notified every time I upload a new tutorial or video. So thanks for watching. Until next time.